Thanks for staying with us on the conversation. Now, still in Nigeria, the president, Muhammad Buhari, has sworn in Justice Olukayode Ariwola as acting chief justice of Nigeria at the council chambers of the State House, Abuja. Ariwola, who is the most senior justice of the Supreme Court, was sworn in at around 3 p.m. hours after the resignation of the former CJN, Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad. While the reason for his resignation is still sketchy, a letter was recently leaked where judges of justices rather of the Supreme Court expressed their concerns about their budgetary allocations that have not been increased in the last four years. The justices further accused the CJN of gallivanting with the spouse, children, and personal staff while not allowing them to travel with an assistant on foreign trips. Until his resignation, reports had it that Justice Muhammad was seriously ill. Mohammed has served as a justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria since 2005 and was appointed Chief Justice of Nigeria in 2019. He was formerly a justice of the Nigerian Court of Appeal. He is the second CJN in the road to abruptly exit office. Now, joining us live for this conversation, we have Fred Nziako, legal practitioner, and uh, Deji Ajari. He is the project director, Access to Justice, Abuja, Nigeria. Gentlemen, welcome to the conversation. Thank you for Thank having thanks. me. Good to be with you. So I'll start with you, uh, Barrister Fred. Justice Tanker's abrupt exit comes at a time when his colleagues on the Supreme Court bench accuse him of hampering the operations of the Supreme Court by failing to fund judges' welfare as well as frivolous expenditures. Now, there has been no major reason for his resignation, but do you feel that these probably uh, coincide uh, are possible reasons for his resignation? The old saying, um, there's an old saying that uh, the witch cried in the night and the baby died in the morning. That uh, once that happens, there is a nexus, there is a link, there is a connection between the cries of the witch at night and the death of the baby in the morning. It may not completely be divorced, but um, Honorable Justice um, Tanko Mohammed may have resigned on account of the weighty um, allegations or rather protests against his style of leadership by his brother justices of the Supreme Court. And uh, if you look at their, their grievances, these are grievances that cannot be swept under the carpet. Because it, it, it beats everybody's imagination how the budget of Supreme Court will remain uh, the same for three, four years running, fixed at 110 billion every year. And meanwhile, even that amount, the Justice of the Supreme Court complain that they don't know how that money is spent. That simply means that from their estimation and from what they let the public know, um, that the Supreme Court has been run in a most opaque, non-transparent manner, and to the extent that uh, the justices the complain of using fairly used in Tukumbo vehicles, I mean, that is um, the lowest anybody can think of. And uh, that uh, they, they even uh, 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 scramble to get to, uh, opportunities to attend courses and the programs abroad. And even when the, such opportunities come, they have very lean budgets to, to do so. Whereas, in their estimation and uh, from their complaint, that the family of uh, the immediate past uh, chief judge, chief justice, have been gallivanting and wallowing in wealth. Um, I, I understand from the media that um, he has uh, not less than 23 children, whereas the Supreme Court itself is supposed to have 21 justices of Supreme Court to make up the full complement of Supreme Court as provided by the Constitution. But as of today, we have not more than 17 justices of Supreme Court. And with this resignation, it has brought it down to 16. So the justices said that or complained that they have been overburdened with a lot of workload, uh, whereas uh, there is a lack of commensurate welfare packages for all the works they do, okay. to the extent that they don't even have adequate materials and equipment to work with. 
So all this right, is but, all right, Marisa Fred, sorry, I'll, I'll like to... very strong uh, opinions. I'd like to come in here now. Now, following these uh, accusations that have been laid down now, DG, Mr. Tanko replied to the justices, accusing them of dancing naked in the marketplace and absolving himself of any wrongdoing. Now, Barrister Fred said, most likely, you cannot necessarily uh, uh, dissolve all these coincidences of this uh, accusations lifted up on Justice uh, Tanko Mohammed. But with an electionary season around the corner, could these accusations also be politically motivated? Um, it is important that we recognize the place of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is, um, the Supreme Court represents the center of the third arm of government, the first being the executive, the second, the legislature. And um, just like you have the Asorok Villa, just like you have the National Assembly Complex, the Supreme Court represents the center of the, all of the activities of the judiciary. And um, the, judici the role that the judiciary plays in um, our democracy cannot be overemphasized. It is said, um, that uh, the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. It is not just the last hope of the common man, it is the last hope of every man in Nigeria. And if we compromise on the standard, first of standard of justice that is meted out from the judiciary and particularly from the apex court, the Supreme Court, if we do that, first by compromising on the welfare of the judges, by compromising on the working environment, um, by compromising on the need tools that they need to work to dispense justice fairly and judiciously, then, of course, what it means is that we have taken off this tool of the stable of justice. And at the end of the day, that will mean that no hope is left for either the common man or, in fact, any man at all. And so um, I think um, the issues that were raised, irrespective of whatever the motivations are, are for me very germane and important that they should not be swept under the carpet and they should not be given any political coloration whatsoever. What is important is that those issues should be investigated, they should be, I mean, uh, addressed as quickly as possible. Like the Supreme Court judges, uh, justices said in their letter to the, and I, 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 I dare say from the tone of the letter, it would appear that that letter was tended to be a private communication, but somehow, uh, because uh, of uh, any howness in Nigeria, it appears that the letter leaked to the media. And for whatever it is, I think um, the judges, the justices, having been pushed to the wall so much so that they had to write this letter, I think um, it should be a cause of, of concern for every one of us, irrespective of um, our affiliations, politically or otherwise. And so. For me, I would not want to look at it from the prism okay. of politics or otherwise. I would rather that we should look at those issues. Are they indeed, are they truly uh, existing as alleged? And if it is so, then it is a shame. It should be a matter that should be shameful, not just for us, and not just for uh, uh, the judges, not, for, not just for the judiciary, but for the entire legal profession. I, as a lawyer, am personally... All right, Deji, I, I think you're emphasized on the fact that no matter the circumstances, and proper investigations should be conducted in this. Now, Barrister Fred, uh, his predecessor, Walter Onoge, was also controversially suspended by President Muhammad Buhari in January 2019. Now, this caused a lot of opera in Nigeria. He never returned to office and he was convicted by the Code of Conduct Tribunal in April 2019 for false assets declaration. Now, his departure was termed by some as dictatorship taking too far. Now, were you among those who felt an organ was unjustifiably removed? It is important to further state that um, even though he was uh, found guilty by the Code of Conduct uh, Tribunal, he was cleared by the uh, super, uh, Superior Court of Records. Mm -hmm. And as of as today, um, Honorable Justice Walter Samuel and Kano Onogen cannot be said to be indicted uh, because the indictment from the tribunal had been watched by a superior um, judicial um, uh, authority. I, I, uh, I, answering your question directly, I very strongly believe that uh, Walter Onogen was removed for political reasons. I mean, it goes without saying that um, the, the grounds were for his removal was laid when the 
security some agencies in Nigeria um, did what they called a, a, a string operation, but which most Nigerians see as a bastardization of the sanctity of uh, the judiciary. When the residences of, of the uh, Supreme Court justices were uh, invaded at night and the sanctity was, um, uh, was uh, uh, messed up. And uh, even in, in some cases, that such invasion were not, uh, was not called for. Now, it now snowballed into uh, the removal of Justice Onogen in most spurious and uh, uh, discreditable circumstances as uh, the build up towards 2019 election was uh, coming forward. And that was why people immediately, Justice Tanko Mohammed was installed. And people started having insinuations that um, his installation at the CJN, his nomination by the president and subsequent uh, swearing at CJN had a lot of political motives. And uh, we saw that play out at the tribunal. And we saw also that play out in the case of Imo State. So Justice uh, Tanko Mohammed had always been in the eye of the storm. Many Nigerians do not have confidence in his. Um, in the discharge of his duties at the CJN of Nigeria. A lot of them even carpet him as not being adequately tooled, adequately schooled in jurisprudence and in orthodox law. Uh, they say he was an Islamic scholar and as such uh, should not uh, have been the CJN. But these are all matter of impressions and the opinions of the people. What was important was that he ascended that seat as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Uh, whether he did well or not lies in the realm of argument. Okay. Some say he did well, some will say he did not do well, but those who say he did not do well will point out to the fact that a very important instrument of uh, judicial adjudication, which is the procedures and the rules of court that had required amendment uh, at the Supreme Court level, had been lying on his table for the past three all right, years. All right, Barrister, Barrister Fred, done, sorry, I'd like, to cut, about it. I'd like to cut in here now. While you're talking about the deficits of the judicial sector, of course, the leadership, uh, we know that um, early in 2022 and even in 2021, late 2021, we saw uh, court workers going on strike, uh, complaining on the fact that state governments have not, some state governments have not implemented the financial autonomy. Now, DG, what exactly are the benefits of this financial autonomy? And or why are state governments delaying on implementing on this? I spoke earlier about the importance of the judiciary. And, um, you know, um, the judiciary is in, expected to be independent. Now, can the judiciary be truly independent if its finances are tied to any of the other three arms of government? to which it is supposed to serve or act as a check. It is important that we also understand that if financial autonomy is not granted to the judiciary and the, the heads of the courts, that's the chief judges or the chief justice, as the case may be, have to go cap in hand to the heads of the executive to beg for funds, then naturally they will be subservient to them and naturally they are likely to uh, become pliable uh, in the hands of the executive or the legislature, as the case may be. And so the importance of that financial uh, uh, independence or financial autonomy of the judiciary cannot be overemphasized. Now, we have quite a lot of state governors who have refused blatantly to, um, um, to, to toe the line of honor and, I mean, um, implement the constitutional requirements, the constitutional independence that, uh, the, that the, the, or the judiciary ought to have. And one would understand, I mean, the only reasonable explanation one would want to give to that is nothing other than they intend to hold uh, the uh, courts, the judiciary to ransom and continue to control okay, them. Okay, Deji, Deji, due to time, due to, to time, still on this issue, quickly, please, do you feel that this new acting chief justice, Ariwola, will actually do better to implement this financial autonomy of the judiciary quickly? Now, th that financial autonomy is not something that the Chief Justice of Nigeria can do or undo. So it is beyond him. It, is actually, it actually lies right now in the hands of the governors to obey what the courts have already 
interpreted as the provision of the constitution. And so um, I would not want to put it on him or either the outgone um, the chief justice of Nigeria. It, I don't think it is their responsibility. It lies on the executive who are the ones who execute um, uh, the, the principles or policies rather that uh, are already enshrined in the constitution. And right. um, uh, for me, for me, the way I see it, whichever way, whether he is able to do better or not, um, generally in uh, the administration of the judiciary, uh, is something that we will have to leave to uh, uh, posterity. We have to wait to see how okay. it performs. It is actually uh, not something that one can predict uh, at the moment. Now, whichever way we also see... All right, uh, 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 definitely we're waiting because we're having another acting chief justice of Nigeria. Uh, we do hope that uh, Justice Ariwola will do better in his stead while we still wait for investigations to continue on these allegations that have been placed on the former chief justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed. Thank you so much, Barrister Fred Nziako, and of course, Deji Ajari, for joining us on this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. And this is where we'll draw the curtains for today's edition of The Conversation. Do join us again on Wednesday for another edition of The Conversation. I am Rita Omwadia. Bye-bye.